Redemption Game victory. Another champion will be crowned today in Omaha at the College World Series. CBS Sports is proud to welcome you back to Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska for the 51st College World Series championship game. And for the first time in the 10 years during which the teams have been seeded, the top two teams will vie for the title as number one Alabama takes on the number two seed, LSU. It's another spectacular day here in Omaha. The temperature as we approach the first pitch, 79 degrees, just a light breeze out of the northeast at five miles per hour. And again this year, another record-setting year at the box office of the College World Series with today's crowd. The attendance for this year's event will exceed 200,000 fans for the first time ever. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough. It's great to have you with us for this all-Southeastern Conference National Championship game. It's just the second time in the history of the College World Series. The two teams from the same conference have gone head-to-head -head for the title. And it's tough to imagine a more even matchup in a championship game. They have identical records to Alabama and LSU, 56 and 13. Alabama won the SEC tournament title, while LSU won the conference regular season championship. And these are the top two home run hitting teams in the nation. LSU had an easier time getting to the College World Series championship game. They went undefeated in bracket one in double elimination play. 3-0, and oh, the Tigers, in the College World Series this year. While Alabama went 4-1 and one to win bracket two, but they faced three elimination games to make it to today's championship game. And I'm pleased to be joined again this week here in Omaha by Fred Lynn, who appeared in the College World Series on three occasions for the USC Trojans, and his team was victorious all three times. And Fred, as we talk about these two teams, Alabama, the number one team in the country, and they've had a surprising performance from Mark Pierre and the kind of performance you'd expect from Joe Caruso. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Uh, we certainly had a good run in the 70s, and Alabama's led by two guys having a good run as well. Joe Caruso, the second baseman, hitting 524 during the College World Series, and Mark Pierre, the DH, came here with one home run and nine RBIs, now has four homers and 16 RBIs. He picked a great time to get hot, Sean. Meanwhile, the LSU Tigers seeking their fourth national championship in the 90s and trying to make it back-to-back -back national titles. And once again, the long ball, a big part of the lineup for Skip Bertman. Yeah, the defending champs are led by All-American shortstop Brandon Larson, who has hit 40 home runs this year. He's got three of them this College World Series, so he's staying pretty hot. Also, the center fielder, Mike Kerners, hitting 417 with two homers and seven RBIs. So these two guys are carrying the offensive load for the LSU Tigers. And we're pleased to be joined here in Omaha today by Andrea Joyce. Andrea? All right, thanks, Sean. Well, the LSU Tigers believe they have a secret weapon for today's game right here in this bottle. Last year, Keith Polozola, after the Tigers won the national championship, went down to the field, filled this water bottle up with dirt from the batter's box, right from where Warren Morris stood to hit that game-winning home run. It sat in his room all season long until the regionals. When he felt the team needed a lift, he started bringing it to games. He would tell his teammates, shake it up, take off the top, and smell Rosenblatt Stadium. Well, the bottle has become so important to the team that when Keith forgot to bring it before Wednesday's game. They made the bus driver turn around so they could go back and get it. So don't be surprised if you see it passed around again today as the Tigers try to squeeze a little more magic out of the old dirt one more time. We'll be back with the start of the national championship after this. The NCAA College World Series is sponsored by Napa Auto Parts. We keep America running. Fruit. Put it on and you're ready to play. Fruit, it's all part of the game. And by Desinex, the soothing cure for athlete's foot. I don't ask for directions when I'm lost, and I don't read the instructions when I'm putting my kids' toys together. And I don't need help fixing my car. My friends that go to Napa, where they get this expert advice from ASE certified professionals, which is great for them. They weren't born with the mechanical ability I was. If I can install a satellite dish, I can fix my own car. Honey, where's the duct tape? Evercraft 25-piece soft-sided tool kits are only $14.99 at Napa, just in case. Troy Aikman is back to pass. He's looking, looking, look out. Oh, Aikman goes down. He had a man wide open. What was he thinking? Brute. It's all part of the game. All right, guys. Same play. Both these men have athletes for but only one used the soothing cure. Prescription.
Prescription Strength Desidex. It calms the itching and cools the burning while it heals. Got athlete's foot? Get Desidex, the soothing cure. I don't care how much friction there is between us and our parents right before college. Most of us know that they'll miss us and that they're sad when we go. But that's nothing compared to the way they feel if we don't come back. I think coaching is the only career opportunity in college athletics. Think again. There are many different opportunities and positions within athletics administration. Each year, the NCAA awards enhancement scholarships and internships to help minorities and women pursue graduate degrees and gain valuable practical experience. For more information, contact the NCAA. Another overflow crowd here at Rosenblatt Stadium for today's national championship game and all Southeastern Conference final. Just the second time in World Series history, two teams from the same conference are playing for the title. Stanford and Arizona State of the Pac-10. Then in the 88 final, it was won by the Cardinal, 9-4. LSU has taken the field. Here is today's starting lineup for the Crimson Tide of Alabama. David Tidwell leads off and plays center field. Joe Caruso is the second baseman. Andy Phillips bats third and plays third. The cleanup hitter, right fielder Dustin Moore. G.W. Keller is the left fielder. Matt Frick, the catcher, hits sixth. Batting seventh and playing first base, Robbie Tucker. Mark Peer is the D.H. And the shortstop, Nate Duncan, will bat nine. And the defense for the defending national champions. Wes Davis leads it off in left field. Mark Kerner's in center. Tom Bernhardt is in right. Trey McClure is over at third. Brandon Larson is at short. Freshman Blair Barbier is at second. Eddie Furness is at first. Clint Bernhardt is doing the catching. And on the mound is Patrick Coogan. Coogan's a junior. First team All-American as selected by the National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association with his 14-3 record. 136 strikeouts in 120 and two-thirds innings. Coogan, 6'3", 200 pounds, playing for his hometown university. He's from Baton Rouge. And he features a four-seam fastball on an outstanding overhand curveball, described as a monster curveball by Coach Skip Berkman. Patrick told us yesterday, occasionally he throws a changeup, but he hasn't thrown many lately because when he does, they tend to travel 300 or 400 feet in the opposite direction. Aluminum bats are allowed in collegiate baseball, and all the players use them. All participants much, much uh, must, he said, wear a double ear flap helmet while at the plate. No roll blocks allowed and use of tobacco products also not allowed. The umpiring has been outstanding throughout this College World Series, and all six men who have worked here in Omaha over the last nine days are on the field for this one. It's the only game in which they use six umpires in the College World Series. Al Davis behind the plate, Jim Garman at first, John Magnuson at second, Bob Hernandez at third, Dan Mascoro down the left field line, and Gus Rodriguez is in right field. David Tidwell ready to get this championship game started at 3.41 for the year. Pitch a fastball in the inside corner for strike one. First pitch at 11.40, low. Oh, beautiful day in Omaha. Outstanding weather throughout the College World Series. Tidwell, a senior from Granada, Mississippi. Behind on the count, 0-2. That light breeze blowing across the... Three, says Al Davis, and Tidwell's gone on three pitches. Well, you couldn't ask for a better start from Patrick Coogan. And all the Alabama players told us yesterday that if he gets this monster curveball over early, he can be very tough. And obviously, he's getting it over down and in the strike zone. Two perfect pitches in a row on the curve. So one out and no score just underway in the top of the first. Here's Joe Caruso, the senior second baseman, batting 373 for the year. 
Fouls the first pitch away. Four pitches thrown by Coogan. All of them strikes. Fred mentioned Caruso has been the leading hitter for Alabama here at the College World Series. Hitting 524, 11 for 21. And he told us yesterday he's much more concerned with scoring than he is with base hits. Down the line, tough play. On the move, McClure's throw gets through the first baseman, Furnace. And safe at first is Caruso. Boy, Sean, when you're going well, everything you hit, if it's not a hit, it's a tough ball to handle. Here's a high chopper down to third base. In between hops for McClure, makes a nice play. Short hops Furnace at first, and he just quite can't dig it out. Furnace, even though he's 6'4", if he was 6'5", he could have stretched out, maybe caught that on the short hop, but that's why you have a big first baseman over there, so he can stretch, but he just couldn't quite handle that throw. Now Andy Phillips, the sophomore, and number three hitter. They charged McClure with an error on the throw. Tough error. It was a difficult play. A lot of spin on that bouncer. He had to charge it, catch it about belt high, but he had time to throw the runner out had it been a good throw. Therefore, the error charge. Sean, neither of these teams run very much. I mean, Alabama only has one stolen base in the College World Series, and LSU has seven. They let their do the top all the time. And as we mentioned, they're the top two home run hitting teams in the nation. LSU this year set a single season college record. They have 186 home runs. Alabama is at 159, third highest total of all time. And in between the BYU team of 1988, which hit 161 and had the record prior to this year. LSU has obliterated that record with 186 home runs and counting. They did it. Eight home runs here at the College World Series in three games. All of them victory. Russo, the runner at first. Noah's 12 stolen bases has been thrown out seven times this year. Sean, I think both of these coaches feel that they don't want to run themselves out of an inning when they have so much potential to hit home runs. Both coaches have talked about how the college game has changed. It used to be based more on Pitching and defense. There's Jim Wells in his third season as Alabama head coach. And Skip Bertman, for whom Wells served as an assistant in the late 80s at LSU. They are very good friends. Wells and Bertman speak to each other via the telephone on almost a daily basis. In fact, Coach Wells told us yesterday he chatted with Bertman each of the past two days looking for some advice on motivate his team for the elimination games against Miami. But this time of the year, he had run out of his own ideas having played so many games. I think the line was drawn today, though. I don't believe that uh, <laughs> Coach Wells is going to be able to ask Skip Bertman for any information. Both coaches have adapted to the changes in college baseball now. You don't see much bunting, much hit-and-run baseball from these two teams. They Generally wait for the long ball, the two and three run homer, and each team has received an abundance of those this year. And both coaches told us they didn't necessarily like that, but uh, that's the way the game has evolved, and so that's the way they try to coach. Russo bluffing, and now he takes off a swing and a miss by Phillips. He strikes out, but it's a stolen base for Caruso, his 13th of the year. Phillips down swinging for the second out of the ball game, both via the strikeout for Patrick Coogan. He gets his lead by Caruso, a huge lead and a great jump. Even though the Coogan was holding him tough with the three or four throws over there, he got a great jump to go on a breaking ball, and Aaron Hart couldn't handle it. Stolen base. So an RBI opportunity with a runner in scoring position for the cleanup hitter, Dustin Moore.
79 runs batted in to go with a 339 average. Fouled out of play to the right. Patrick Coogan has appeared twice against the tide this season and is 0-1. Teams played five times prior to today this season. Alabama has won three out of the five. In the Southeastern Conference Tournament Championship game on May 18th in Columbus, Georgia, won by Alabama 12 to 2. The first three games you see were part of a weekend series in Tuscaloosa. LSU won the final game to win the regular season crown in the Southeastern Conference. LSU won the first of their two meetings in the conference tournament, but Alabama won the next day to win the tournament title. Very even rivalry. You saw on the screen one of the Alabama wins a 28 to 2. Something of LSU, the worst loss in the history of the Tiger baseball program. Fastball high. 2 and 2 on Moore, a junior from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Described by Coach Wells as an all or nothing guy. A long swing. Generally feast or famine when Dustin is up there. It skips away from Earnhardt and on to third goes Caruso. They wanted to appeal down to first to the Tigers to see if Moore swung the bat. He did not. Said the first base umpire, Jim Garman. Well, it looks like Earnhardt's going to be a busy guy today with Coogan throwing these nasty breaking balls, breaking pretty much straight down. Does a nice job of sliding in front of the ball and try to keeping it in front of him. Fortunately, it bounces off and the runner is able to advance. Wild pitch charge to Coogan. Now the 3-2 to Moore. Strike three. Coogan strikes out the side in the first inning. And Alabama leaves the runner at third. After a half inning, the national championship game. Alabama nothing and LSU coming up. Throws fastballs, most. 
mostly down and away, two-seam and four-seam fastball. A slurve, as he describes it, a hard curveball, and a modified circle change. Fly ball out of play into the big crowd in left. Three and zero here in Omaha are the Tigers. And you add their four straight wins to win the title last year. They've won seven straight at the College World Series. Victory over Rice, and then two wins over Stanford. And as a result, LSU has not played since Wednesday, so the Tigers are well rested. Well, Alabama has been in action the last couple of days, staving off elimination against the Miami Hurricanes. Neither coach talked much about the rest versus the being in action every day as an advantage or a disadvantage. There's a deep drive to left at the wall and gone. Well, the last two hitters to come to the plate for LSU in a national championship game have hit the ball out of the ballpark. Warren Morris to end last year's title game and Danny Higgins to get this one started for LSU. What a great start for LSU. The pitch prior to this one, Matt Frick, the catcher, went out and they told Michael Daniel to get the ball down. You can see this ball is not down. It's away, but it's not down. It's out over the plate and up. And Higgins just punches it out to left field. And even though the wind is blowing from left to right, he had enough to get it out of here. Homer number 11 for Higgins. And the Tigers add to their record-setting total for the season. 187 home runs. And nine in three games plus one inning in this year's College World Series. Batter is freshman Blair Barbier, a true freshman, having a very solid freshman season. 356 with 15 homers. A little lob down the left field line. That will fall in front of Keller. Back-to-back -back hits to open the ball game for LSU. Sean, right now, Daniel just not getting the ball down in the zone. Everything is up. This ball isn't hit very hard. The pitch is inside, kind of fisted out there. But if the ball's down, it's a harmless ground ball or a pop-up. He's got to get the ball down in the zone, or otherwise he's going to get hammered. His velocity is not that good. He relies on his change-up and his breaking stuff, and thus far hasn't got any of those over the plate. Now Daniel facing one of the best hitters in the country in Brandon Larson. All down and in. As you saw, Larson has hit 40 homers, an SEC record, and the fourth highest single season total in college baseball history. The fourth player to hit 40. RBA at first. Nobody out, 1 0 LSU in the first. We understand we've been experiencing audio difficulties. And our technicians are working to correct the problem. We apologize for it. The ball hit the short. Nice play there. On the first, not in time for the double play. Nate Duncan, the sliding backhand play in the hole. And he moved it quickly to Joe Caruso to force Barbier for the first out of the inning. What a nice play by Nate Duncan. Kind of taking some of the fire out of this LSU assault here in the first inning as he takes a base hit away from Brandon Larson. Nate Duncan is in there specifically because of his glove, makes a nice sliding play, and is able to throw a strike the second to Caruso, and Caruso still tries to turn the double play. What a nice play. Now it's Larson at first, and he has decent speed. Nine out of ten in stolen bases this year. So the tide will pay attention to Larson at first with one out. 1-0 LSU on the leadoff home run by Danny Higgins. Eddie Furness, the cleanup hitter, is at the plate. Furness second on the team with a 374 batting average. 17 homers, 77 runs batted in. Oh. 
Ernest has 52 career homers. Tied with Todd Walker for the all-time LSU lead. Eddie marvels at the fact that Brandon Larson has managed to hit 40 in one year. 52 is the career record at LSU. Here you get a look at the defense as we pan by, and the shortstop is playing almost up behind second base. Third baseman's at almost at dead short. I mean, if he wants to bunt right here, it's a base hit. But he's a dead pole hitter, and he's the number four guy. He's a power guy, so I don't think we'll be seeing it. Ball outside, 2-0 and oh on Furnace. Tournament in the regionals 
And here in Omaha, ordinarily he's a late in the game relief pitcher, but with the national title up for grabs today, he could be in very early. Fleur, a 282 hitter with 12 homers. Hits that in the air, a long way to center field. Pidwell drifting to the warning track to make the catch. Furnace went back late to tag up, and as a result, he won't go to third. Eddie a little bit agitated with himself. As he returned to second base, see him gesturing in frustration. He knows he could be standing at third right now. Well, actually, though, Sean, with one out, he did the proper thing going halfway. He wasn't quite sure whether that ball was going to be caught or not. It got up in that wind and just started to carry. Even though the flags are blowing in, that ball carried pretty well out to right center, and, and there was some doubt whether or not the center fielder was going to be able to get that ball. Seventh batter of the inning, the right fielder, Tom Bernhardt. Foul ball. Perhaps a play for Tucker. And it's a couple of rows deep. Went all the way over to the tarp. One strike on Bernhardt batting 313. 16 home runs, 46 runs batted in. For the senior from Miami, Florida. He's out of Columbus High School. Pointed in the direction of LSU by Ricky Blanton, one of the fine basketball players in Tiger history. He was also from Miami, the Blantons and Bernhardt's. Our friends in Miami. Ricky Blanton encouraged Bernhardt to attend LSU, which he did as a walk-on. Two-nothing Tigers. Out of the first. You might be wondering why LSU is the home team given that Alabama is the higher seeded team. That is the Tigers reward for going undefeated in their bracket coming into this championship game because they're three and oh here. They are the home team. That's heading for the gap in right center. Furness around to score. Kerner being waved around third. He will score. It's a double for Bernhardt and a four nothing LSU lead. that Daniel has thrown, but again, it's up in the zone. Nice piece of hitting by Bernhardt as this ball is away from him. Sees it very well. Like you said, these people have seen each other five times this year. There are no surprises here. And he drives in it in the gap. With two outs, these runners score easily. And LSU has knocked out Michael Daniel in the first inning. And you have to feel for him experiencing the dream of a lifetime pitching in a college world series championship game and he's knocked out after two thirds
minutes in the game. Jared Kingry on in relief for Alabama. 10-1 and one this season in 32 games. Fewer hits allowed than innings pitched. Trying to stop the bleeding. Michael Daniel, the starter, surrendered four in two-thirds of an inning. It's hit. 
and LSU, the juggernaut, they, they just can't do anything wrong right now in the first inning. And the errors have hurt. One error in the inning committed by Duncan. And as a result, any more runs scored in this inning will be unearned. The two runs that just crossed the plate are unearned. Blair Barbier. There's the batter. They're earned on that scoreboard, though, that's for sure. Speed pitch, Barbier out in front of it. He singled the left and was erased on a fielder's choice for the first out of the inning. Six runs on six hits, one Alabama error. LSU made an error in the top of the inning that did not prove costly. Ball outside. Five runs charged to Daniel and his two-thirds an inning on five hits. One run charged to Kingry. Jared came in. He walked the first batter. Then the error by Duncan allowed Earnhardt to reach. Then the single by Higgins that scored two. But a nightmare for Michael Daniel and Jared Kingry. Daniel told us last night that ordinarily if he dreams about baseball the night before he pitches, he pitches very well. We don't know if he was dreaming about baseball last night. If he did, obviously it quickly has become a nightmare. Daniel was the last man on the pitching staff after the fall. Wasn't throwing very hard, wasn't very effective. Then got shelled earlier this season by West Alabama, which is not a Division I program. And it looked like he was going to stay on the bench for the rest of the year. Then they realized he had a vision problem. He told the coaches he couldn't see the plate. He got fitted with contact lenses. Pitched better down the stretch when he got another chance. That's down to third. And gobbled up by Phillips to end that nightmare at first inning for Alabama. Six runs on six hits for the Tigers. And one Alabama era helped the cause as well. Six nothing after an inning.
It's 6-0 Tigers as Alabama bats in the second. G.W. Keller fouled the first pitch away. Keller at 376. Surprising power, 21 homers. The young man who weighs just 160 pounds. Jim Wells says he's never seen that kind of power from somebody as small as Keller. Both Keller and Wells credit his efficiency with the long ball to his bat speed. He's able, with solid mechanics, to generate outstanding bat speed. Well, Sean, also a lot of times, you know, when you're that small of stature, you have a smaller strike zone, and, and it's trouble for guys to throw breaking balls to you. And a lot of times, if, if they can't get those over, then you're going to see a lot of fastballs. Plus, they look at your side, and oh, this guy can't hit it out. Boom. Patrick Coogan pitching with a 6-0 lead and mowing down the Crimson Tide hitters. Earnhardt had to throw to first. So all the outs made by Alabama have been via the strikeout. Well, Coogan has shown us a nasty breaking ball, and he's setting it up with a good fastball, which he's keeping up in the zone, just to keep the hitters honest. When you get to college players with two strikes, that's when they have a tendency to chase especially guys with power and free swingers. Matt Frick, the catcher, tried to bunt his way on. This would have been a major surprise. Frick at 333, 16 homers, 55 runs batted in. In his first year at Alabama, he's a junior from Phoenix, Arizona. Spent last year at Yavapai Community College in his native state. Mentioned the six runs in the first, the most by one team in the first inning of any College World Series championship game. And it's the second biggest inning in any inning of a College World Series championship game. USC scored seven runs in the fourth in 1958. Trojans beat Missouri 8-7. Five batters retired by Coogan, all via the strikeout as Frick went down swinging. Well, the Alabama hitters, they certainly know what's coming. It's going to be a fastball and this hard breaking ball. This breaking ball is up. It's one of the few breaking balls that has been up by Coogan. In fact, it's too high. You know, a high breaking ball really is right thigh high. This is almost letter high, and that you see it really well, but it's very hard to hit. Two down to the second, six nothing Tiger. Finally a ball put into play by Tucker, and that could be a problem. Nice play. Trey McClure, the barehanded pickup and throw to first, and he benefited from the fact that Robbie Tucker doesn't run very well. A one, two, three inning. In the second for Coogan, CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA College World Series will continue after this message and a word from your local station. With Sierra's strength and exceptional power, life's daily obstacles are easily handled. Sierra's third door, you will have one less hurdle to overcome. Sierra by GMC. Putting you comfortably in command. CBS. Welcome home. The Bellabat Rouge Casino at the foot of the bridge in Catfish Town where all the excitement's going down. If you're looking for fun, we have it all the Louisiana's entertainment capital. Register now through July 4th for our three choices, one winner giveaway. One lucky winner can choose from a 1997 Ford Mustang, Ford Explorer, or Mercedes-Benz. Drawing July 16th. So if you're looking for fun, my name rings a bell. Oh, that Rouge Casino. It's Louisiana's entertainment capital. Hi, folks, I'm Bill Simon. Simple Simon is celebrating the grand opening of our third store on South Airline Highway near the industrial complex. Folks, we got unbelievable tire prices and automotive service at all three locations. Good your tire start at $15.95. You can't even buy a used tire for that. Free food, hot air balloon rides, space walk for the children. It's vacation time. Take advantage of our grand opening discounts. Folks, ride on us. Saving you money is important to us, and bringing your family home safe, it's just that simple. 
Welcome home to WAFB Channel 9. Back at Rosenblatt Stadium, LSU, leading Alabama 6-0. Well, last year, who could forget the dramatic ninth-inning home run by Warren Morris to win the game in the national championship for LSU. Now, he also...
had it right in front of him, but there's so much top spin, it just kind of eats him up. Good hustle by Curter, hustling down the line, even though they're up 6 nothing, they're trying to get more. And everything that will go wrong is going wrong for Alabama. Looks like it would be an easy 1-2-3 inning for Kingry. Now he works for Trey McClure. Sean, that's one of the aspects of the aluminum bat that we don't talk about very much is the spin that it puts on the ball. And when you have a, a big, strong guy putting overspin on it, it has a tendency to oh. make that big hop late, and it eats up the infielders. First error by Caruso in 33 chances of the College World Series. He's been oh. rock solid defensively. This is uncharacteristic defensive trouble for Alabama. Generally, they're at or near the top of the SEC fielding percentage under Coach Wells. Ball four. Carmelo Juice trying to get something started with two outs. They lead six to nothing in the second to the Tigers of Louisiana State University. Kingry has walked two. Kerner at second. McClure at first. Trick out to the mound to chat with Kingry. And the batter is Tom Bernhardt, the right fielder. Doubled into the gap in right center to knock in two. And drive the starter, Michael Daniel, from the ballgame. Two-thirds of an inning gave up five runs, four earned on five hits. No walk to strikeout. Bernhardt with his one for one today, the leading hitter in this College World Series. Moved past Jay Pecci of Stanford, went 10 for 17 for the Cardinals. Ernest and Caruso in the top four. been busy. 
Rizzi pitched four innings two days ago against Miami. Tied Steve Dahl in an agent. Turner had to get down quickly. On a line foul down the left field line. We spoke with Jared yesterday. He said he could pitch nine today if he needed to. This being the championship game, adrenaline being the force that it is. It looks like he needs to. One, two, hit in the air, left center. Long run for Tidwell. He's still going. That ball is off the bottom of the wall. Two runs have scored. It will be a three-run double for Wes Davis. And the air really hurts now. Three unearned runs across the plate, and it's 9-0 LSU. Here went up there hitting three 
10 for the year. Nate Duncan, the number nine, hit it a bat next, and then David Tidwell. Duncan at 256. And he's done a terrific job to raise his average that high when you consider that a month and a half into the season back on March 28th, he was hitting 071. He's hit over 300 cents to get his average to 256, and he's 6 for 18 here at the College World Series. Patrick Coogan pitched his popped up, shallow right. Barbier out to make the catch. It's Bernhardt, the right fielder, right behind. Coming up next, third round coverage of the Kemper Open from Avenel in Potomac, Maryland. After two rounds, D.A. Wybring and Mark Wiebe tied the lead. It's minus six. Greg Norman, Tom Lehman, Nick Faldo all lurking right behind. Kidwell up the middle, past Coogan and through into center field, and Alabama has its first hit. And a speedy runner at first. Kidwell aboard with two down. Sean, right now, all Alabama has to do is worry, don't worry about the score. Get people on base. Tidwell hits the ball right up the middle. Coogan is not in a very good fielding position as he falls way to the left towards first base. Kind of waves that at Ala Bill Lee to try to snag it. But there's a long way to go. I mean, if, if the if Kingbury can shut down the LSU offense and the Alabama defense can kind of get together here, they, Alabama has the potential to score a lot of runs. This might be a start. Caruso deep to left, and that ball is gone. A home run. Just over the left field wall out of the reach of Wes Davis. Coogan surrenders his first run to the ball game on a two-run blast by the senior Caruso, and it's 9-2. to two. earlier the fact 
that uh, the reason that Coogan doesn't throw his changeup is that it's been getting pounded, but he's got to throw it. I don't care if he just bounces it. He's got to put that seed of doubt into the Alabama hitters so they, they just can't sit on his fastball. Joe Caruso said yesterday, if we can get in the bullpen, we'll win the game. Our bullpen is better than theirs. Breaking ball, missed. One and two to the count. Two outs, the runner at second. Nine to two, LSU, top of the third. Foul tipped and squeezed by Earnhardt for strike three. But the comeback process begins for Alabama on the two-run homer by Caruso. After two and a half, nine to two, LSU. If you see junk hanging around, the proper thing to do is dig it out. That thing. Triple Play 98, the ultimate judge. Oh, that ball. EA Sports. It's in the game. I helped my dad build this place. Well, help. I was so small I could barely swing the hammer. But he taught me a lot about tools. He used to say, you can buy cheap tools every couple of years. Or you can buy Stanley. 1843, a company from New Britain, Connecticut, has been helping people do things right. Stanley. I even take my tape roll fishing. Well, that way I'll know how big a story to tell. I predict on Tuesday the 17th, Flight 6 will be delayed, and my husband will get heartburn. On Saturday, my son Jeffrey will have diarrhea just as his train leaves for college. Maybe you can't predict stomach problems, but you can always predict the right medicine. Unlike other leading medicines, Pepto-Bismol relieves all five of these stomach problems. On Sunday, his mother will fill up linguine and indigestion. I predict relief. Pepto-Bismol. Five stomach problems, one medicine. Baseball etiquette. <laughs> Never, ever let a guest leave your party without permission. Jim, that was unbelievable! Triple Play 98, the ultimate judge. EA Sports. It's in the game. Visit our nation's capital and check out the action on the hill. Meet the driving forces and find out who's been puttering around. The Kipper Open, next on CBS. Business is booming at the concession stand. On this warm day in Omaha, the bat fell a shoe booming as well. With some help from the Alabama defense. Famous faces who appeared at the College World Series over the years. President George Bush played first base for Yale. In the late 40s, Tom Penders, now the Texas basketball coach, was here for UConn in 1965. Among those who went on to baseball, stardom was played here. Mike Schmidt, Roger Clemens, Barry Bonds, Albert Bell, and Deion Sanders, among many others. And this goes on and on. Barry Larkin, Bill Clark, Rafael Palmero, Dave Magadan for Alabama back in 83. It was the last time Alabama was here in the championship game. Here are the names of the... People selected to that 50th anniversary all-time CWS team that we spoke of last inning, including Robin Ventura, Pete Incavillian, Dave Winfield, LSU's Todd Walker, Redlands coach Rod Dato, 10 of USC's 11 championships, coach of the Trojans, Danny Higgins, the best.
Michael Daniel started. Last of the two thirds of inning. And Kingry replaced him. Kingry kind of tough on right handers because he kind of swings it across. You can see this one gets the outside edge with a little bit of movement. In Kingry's defense, you know, he's already made three College World Series appearances. This is his fourth. The center field and Tidwell. One out, back to first goes Higgins. Kingry's been very busy. Appeared in three games here at the College World Series fire suit today. He's now appeared in four out of the six. He has a pair of wins. Was the winning pitcher in both victories over Mississippi State here in Omaha. And had a save against Miami. With a four-inning pitch in his last outing. Two days ago. And these pitchers have been working in warm weather. And in the 80s for the most part throughout this College World Series. One big advantage for LSU, its pitching staff is rested. They haven't played since Wednesday. Alabama's been in action every day. A little dribbler past the mound. The play is at first for Caruso, and he goes there to get Larson. So LSU is piling it up without anything from their best hitter, Larson, to this point. He's 0 for 3. Higgins now at second. And score this play 1-4-3 as Kingry got a piece of it. Yeah, Kingry gets a piece of this ball, and I was half expecting it to glance off and everybody be safe the way things have been going for Alabama, but it does careen off to Caruso, and he puts it away. See him pat his glove there? Yeah, I got this one. Here's a jam shot. That would have been a busted bat if it had been wood. Here we knocks it over to Caruso. little assist to the pitcher. Easy play. Two outs. Tiger fan. He went a long way to the opposite field by Eddie Furness. We have seen balls hit in this ballpark that have cleared those bleachers in left and right field. Furness singled and scored in the first, struck out swinging in the second. The single came against the starter Daniel, the strikeout against Kingry. Close for the ball, one and one. That's the pitch you don't get when you've walked four hitters in the inning and two thirds. If he had pinpoint control, Al Davis, the home plate umpire, more than likely would give him that pitch. Check swing, ball two. LSU leads nine to two. The Tigers are batting in the third. This College World Series National Championship game. Ernest, the hitter, is a junior and an outstanding student. GPA of 3.6. As a pre-med major, he's from a family of doctors. His father is a doctor. He has two older sisters who are doctors. And Eddie's going to pursue a career in medicine when his playing days are over. He hopes that's after a professional career. Do it. 
have scored in each of the first two innings. The Tigers trying to score again here in the third. Mike Kerner, the batter. He singled to center to not get a run and scored in the first. He reached on that two-out error by Caruso for the first of the three unearned runs last inning. Singled by Kerner in the first inning, extended his hitting streak to 19 games. He's at 390 during that streak. You know, Sean, most of the time in a lineup, you can pitch around one or two guys to get to somebody else that's maybe not quite as good. But in these lineups, you just can't do that. And when you walk guys, the next guy could kill you. Kerner hits it high in the air, but not all that deep in right center. Sidwell, the center fielder, puts it away. And LSU ran two in the third. And the Tigers lead by a touchdown. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA College World Series will continue after this message and a word from your local station. There's this college team I practice with. Each one is out to prove that they can hit the Rhine Express. I'm out to prove they can't. After a day of fastballs, it's Advil for me. On tough pain, two Advil work better than any two Tylenol. No wonder, for sore muscles, doctors recommend Advil. I love that sound. Advanced medicine for pain. And for the sinus congestion and pain that can come with allergies, try Advil cold and sinus. CBS. Welcome home. In a hurry? Going places? Gotta fly? Check our fares first. Because right now, the airline serving Baton Rouge are offering more flights and lower fares to destinations throughout the nation and around the world. So pick your destination, make your reservation, and get your travel plans moving with competitive, convenient air service at Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport. Why buy auto insurance directly from an insurance company? U.S. agencies have some very good reasons. First, there's no middleman. That savings right there. Plus, your claims are paid more quickly because you're dealing directly with U.S. agencies. And U.S. agencies specialize in auto insurance. In fact, it's the only insurance U.S. agencies sell. Your quote is free and you walk out fully insured with your policy and ID card in your hand. What does dealing direct add up to for you? Quality auto insurance for less. Welcome home to WAFB, Louisiana's News Channel. Back at Rosenblatt Stadium, LSU leads Alabama 9-2. Well, late in the season, Alabama suffered a severe loss when Roberto Vaz, their best hitter and best left-hander, suffered a broken right foot. Coach Jim Wells, though, says that he's still got a major role on this team. He says that Vaz is so perceptive and intuitive, it's almost like having an additional coach in the dugout. Roberto is now a member, an honorary oh. member of the D squad. Those are the guys who don't usually get to play. Their main job to keep the team loose and to keep them motivated. His mantra throughout this game, let the dogs loose. And as we saw in that last inning, Sean, the dogs are starting to yap. Let's see if they can keep it up. All right, Andrea. Thank you very much. Obviously, a disappointment for Vaz, unable to play in his first college World Series. And a big blow to their team, but Tim Wells has been telling his team over and over again, we have more than enough good players who are still active to win the national championship. They're one win away from it, but down by seven runs. Oh. G.W. Keller begins the fourth against Patrick Coogan. Two balls and a strike. The count on Keller. Breaking ball in for strike two. Keller went down swinging in the second. One of six strikeouts through three innings recorded by Coogan. Ball that'll drift out of play. What a nice play in the stands and right. Keller's a junior college transfer from Bakersfield in California. He's moved to left field. It is swinging a miss. It gets away from Earnhardt and safe at first is Keller. So Keller reaches on the seventh strikeout of the ball game for Coogan. And a much-needed break caught by the Crimson Tide. Well, you don't see this very often. Actually, it's going to be scored probably a wild pitch. And Frick blocks the ball well. But right here, he takes a little bit too much time to get rid of the ball. He's got to realize that this guy is moving. Does a nice job of keeping the ball out in front of him on a tough pitch. 
right now he's just a little tardy getting out there. Makes a good strong throw, but it's too late. Strikeout on the wild pitch. The seventh strikeout for Kogan. The second wild pitch and very nearly another. Great job of blocking the ball in the dirt done by Earnhardt. Sean, by the end of this game, <laughs> Frick is going to be icing down those knees. <laughs> He's doing a lot of hard work back there. Frick fouled one off the home plate umpire Al Davis. And Al's going to walk it off. Tomorrow the CBS Sports Show features the NCAA Outdoor Track and Field Championship. And LSU's women who have won 10 straight. And Arkansas's men's team, five straight, add to their winning streak. We'll find out tomorrow as the action starts at 1 Eastern time right here on CBS. Brick struck out swinging in the second. He was the second team all SEC catcher this season. And Casey Dunn of Auburn played right here at the College World Series. Coach Wells told us yesterday, in his opinion, no disrespect to Dunn, he thought Frick was the best catcher in the SEC this year. Took the coach and the catcher a while to get on the same page. Frick took over for Dax Norris, a great catcher the last couple of years for Alabama, who was a rah-rah outgoing guy behind the plate. Fair ball and a great stop by McClure, long throw, not in time. That play might have prevented an extra base hit for Frick and kept the double play in order. Terrific play by Trey McClure, but the first two men are on here in the fourth for the Crimson Tide. This is a second nice play by Trey McClure in this ball game. Gets a high hopper right down the line. Has double written all over it. Makes a nice stop. And then from his knees, good accurate throw to first base, but not in time. Nonetheless, a great play. So it's an infield hit for Frick. Frick's personality a lot different from Dak. Uh, Dax Norris, Matt told us yes, he's really not the outspoken guy behind the plate. Well, a while to accept the change in personality from his catcher. Once he did, two worked in harmony, calling the pitches all season long. Robbie Tucker swung at about a 57-footer from Coogan for strike one. Tucker grounded out to the third baseman to end the second. 9-2 LSU, but Alabama is threatening here in the fourth. Pitch in the dirt, gets through Earnhardt. The runners will move on. That will likely be the third wild pitch of the ball game charged to Patrick Coogan. Well, as we mentioned, Matt Frick is having a tough day back there. Coogan is getting everything down. And this ball actually could have been caught. That's going to be a tough one on the official score because that ball didn't hit the ground before it hit his glove. And it has been scored a pass ball. So two wild pitches and a pass ball. And an error for LSU, so it hasn't been cleanly played on the Tiger side. The errors made by Alabama, two of them, have been very costly. There's Robbie Tucker, the junior from Huntsville. Hit ninth yesterday against Miami with a lefty J.D. Arteaga on the mound. Adding seven to the lineup today and ahead in the count, three balls and a strike. Just get the feeling that Alabama, the number one team in the nation, could make a game of this after falling behind nine to nothing. Coach Wells told us Tucker's a dead pole hitter, but in the outfield, all two plays him around the left. Bobby tried to pull that one and fouled it off his leg. The left fielder Davis straight away and Turner, the center fielder, several steps toward left, the opposite field. Three balls and two strikes. Nobody out. 9-2 LSU in the fourth. Well hit down the right field line, fair ball, Tucker pulled that one against the defense, and two runs will score. It's a double for Robbie Tucker, and all of a 
Wes Davis, the batter. Bernhardt, the runner at first, another big, strong guy. We talked about the work of Kurt Hester, the strength and conditioning coach. He was here earlier in the College World Series, but had to go back to Baton Rouge. Coach Burtman got off a couple of good lines about that yesterday. Davis hits in the air to right. It'll stay in the ballpark for Dustin Moore. Two down. Coach Burtman said, well, you know, we probably had three or four football players who were staying in Baton Rouge for the summer. And they needed the workouts. And of course, they have to have five or six strength conditioning coaches supervising their workouts. He also said uh, Coach Hester was like a tuxedo. We had to have him back by Tuesday. So, strength coach is back in Baton Rouge, but a big part of this team's success. Earnhardt, the batter. Clint reached on an error in the first and popped out to end the second. Bernhardt at first, two out. Fourth inning, 9-4 LSU.
Back at Rosenblatt Stadium, LSU still leading Alabama 9-4. Andrea Joyce standing by up in the press box with Dennis Pope, the director of championships for the NCAA. This past week, a big announcement from the NCAA that it's moving its headquarters from its longtime home in Kansas City and moving to Indianapolis. I mean, it's almost like when the Dodgers left Brooklyn or if the World Series were to leave Omaha. How difficult of a move is this going to be for you and your fellow co-workers? Well, I have to be honest with you, Andrew. It's been a difficult week. I think the staff has uh, several concerns. One is uh, the effect on the families of the many employees we have, and we're also concerned about our fellow employees, and, and also about the services that we'll be able to provide for the NCAA as we make this move. But uh, we have a very professional staff, and uh, those of us who are going to make the decisions to either move or stay will make the right decisions, and uh, we'll continue to provide the services we need. When is the move scheduled? Well, right now, all I know is it's scheduled for either the fall of 99 or the uh, spring of uh, 2000. So we have a few years to, to work on it. So you suspect this will have some kind of an impact, at least temporarily, on how the organization is run? Well, I think it will. Basically, we have a lot of support staff who will not be able to make the move because of commitments to their family and whatever. And so those are the individuals I think we'll really miss. And uh, so I think it will have an effect short term, but long term, uh, hopefully we'll be able to work it out. And I'm sure you'll be greeted with open arms, though, in Indianapolis. Best of luck to you. Thank you. All right. Back to you, Sean. Thank you, Andrea. Joe Caruso, the batter, beginning the fifth inning. LSU leads 9-4. to four. Caruso, two-run homer in the third. Got Alabama on the board. Got the 9 nothing deficit of 9-2. That's sinking fast and left and a base hit. That's the 13th hit of this College World Series for Joe Caruso. That's his dad, Kurt, who's been wearing that Superman shirt throughout. And his son's been Superman here in Omaha. 13 hits ties the College World Series record for most hits in one World Series. Now, once again, Caruso gets a ball up in the zone. He provides a very small target with that little crouch that he has. He's a good high fastball hitter. And Joe's the first player since John Fischel of Cal State Fullerton in 1984 to have 13 hits in a World Series. That's down the line and just foul. Andy Phillips almost hit the third base bag on the fly. The other players with 13 hits, Stan Holmes of Arizona State in 81 and Pete Van Horn of Arizona in 1976. Nice call by Bob Hernandez as he avoids the ball as well. And these guys are really starting to tee off on Coogan's fastball. He better start getting it down in the zone. They say they're calling Coogan's bluff. You should, but you wouldn't. Because you did. <laughs> <laughs> and you're glad you didn't. <laughs> Foul ball off the bat of Phillips. Andy's in the hole 0 and 2. He's a sophomore from Demopolis, Alabama. Went to a private school. Demopolis Academy. It's a very small school. There are only eight, or rather 17, in Andy's graduating class. Yet he played on a state championship team in high school. Ball on the dirt. It gets by the new catcher. Conan Horton has taken over for Earnhardt behind the plate. Let's try to find out if Earnhardt is ailing in any way or if Horton simply came in because Coach Burtman thought he was a better man. Well, one of these balls in the previous inning hit Earnhardt on the right hand it looked like and that probably gave him some problems and now Horton's in there and he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna have his hands full trying to hang on to Coogan because everything is that's down is nasty and hard to handle. There's Horton the new catcher. LSU has used three catchers this year. Horton's a senior.
the batter. Hugan from the windup of the runner at third. Ball one to Moore, who has struck out twice. If he just put it in play on the ground, it would likely be another run for Alabama with a runner at third and one out in the infield bat. Out of play to the right. Hugan was charged with a wild pitch on the ball that got by Horton this inning against the roof of the second base. So he has thrown three wild pitches and there's been a pass ball and we've received word from the LSU dugout that there isn't anything wrong with Earnhardt. Horton in there as a coach's decision. And he handles the high fastball, two and one. That's a tough, tough move there because we thought uh, Earnhardt was doing a great job of blocking balls. I mean, it's not his fault that uh, all these balls are in the dirt. The Alabama hitters knew there would be a lot of balls in the dirt. They faced Hogan a couple of times this year, and several of them pulled us yesterday to see if they can catch it to lay off those breaking balls in the dirt. The 3 1 pitch. Hogan might be running out of gas. The pitch is starting to come up. There is double barreled action in the bullpen. That's the first walk that Patrick has thrown. Hogan was drafted last week by the St. Louis Cardinals, actually earlier this week, in the third round. Ball works out in negotiations. He anticipates leaving after this his junior year becoming a professional. He grew up an Atlanta Braves fan in Baton Rouge. There are Doug Thompson, the right-hander, and Chris DeMouy, the lefty, who were throwing last inning. G.W. Keller, the batter. Those gentlemen are ready in the bullpen if needed. Keller reached on a strikeout on the third strike with a wild pitch, and he scored one of the two Alabama runs last inning. That pitch hit him. On the left arm, looked like got him just above the elbow. And here comes Skip Bertman. That might be it for Coogan. GW takes one for the team right here. He sees it that it's going to come inside. I do believe that if he wanted to, he could have gotten out of the way of that, but he just kind of turns his shoulder and says, eh, no big deal. You can see right there, not a real deliberate effort to get out of the way, but a good team play by GW. Right-hander Doug Thompson, the new pitcher, when we return to the College World Series. and 150. 
51 strikeouts in just 119 and two-thirds innings. Been used both as a starter and in relief this season for LSU. Most of his appearances have been as a starter, 19 of the previous 24 as a starter. To mention, this is the first time in College World Series history that a conference has put four teams into the eight-team field. Alabama, Auburn, LSU, and Mississippi State all advanced to Omaha. Right after Mississippi State was eliminated, Coach Ron Polk announced his resignation as head coach of the Bulldogs.
the 2-2. Two -two. He struck him out. Rick slammed the bat down in disgust. It's a huge strikeout for Doug Thompson. Well, this is a great pitch by Thompson. Pinpoints his fastball in, ties up Frick with some good velocity. You can see him try to bring his hands in, but he just can't do it because the pitch is too hard. Slamming down his bat in frustration. So you know this is a key time in this ball game. Very big at bat for Robbie Tucker now. Base is loaded and two out. Alabama down by five in the middle inning. In the fifth, Tucker looked at the ball. He had really been struggling at this College World Series prior to today. Started the day two for 14, but he's one for two in this game. A double down the right field line. Those of you in New England will uh, re remember Kyle Yastrzemski standing up the plate was uh, looking at uh, Robbie Tucker with the hands way up high.
90 for 94 in the SEC at second base. Warren Morris took over for them. Pretty good legacy at that position. Keith Henderson begins to throw in the Alabama pen. Henry has thrown three and a third innings of relief. His four innings two days ago. That looks like a swing, and it is. RBA down on strike for the first out of the fifth. John, really, uh, Kingry has done a wonderful job for Alabama. He's really stymied the attack of the LSU Tigers. He's keeping these hitters off balance, mixing in that kind of a slur breaking ball of his, running the fastball in, and an occasional changeup. Jared, the junior college transfer out of Central Alabama. Brandon Larson, 0 for 3 for the junior from San Antonio, Texas. And he'll join the hit parade. Opposite field single, fielded by Dustin Moore on a hop. Larson is aboard with one out in the fifth as LSU tries to add to its 9 to 4 lead. This is a nice piece of hitting by Brandon Larson, as you mentioned, Sean, has yet to get a hit this today's ball game, but you know what's nice about that? He's got 40 home runs and he knows he's struggling a little bit today, so he tries to go the other way, get himself a base hit, get on for his team. Good hitting. And as we noted earlier, Larson can run. Oh. Eddie Furness, the batter. He singled and scored in the first. Struck out in the second, walked in the third.
closed situation, and it is official. Two attendance records have been set here today. 24,401 folks on hand for the largest single session here today. Overall, a record 204,309 people have attended this year's World Series. Now, they tell us that in the old days, they used to be able to fit all of the ticket reservations and all of the orders in the top drawer of a desk. Well, now they have to track them by computer. And if you want to get reserved seats, the series seats for the, the seats for the entire series, forget about it. you got to wait until the next millennium of three to four year wait, Sean. you got the best seat in the house. Yes, indeed we do. In this new press box, brand new a year ago, Keith Henderson, the new pitcher for Alabama. Third pitcher of the ball game for the Tide. He inherits a jam, first and third and one out. Alabama trying to stay within five runs. First pitch, a strike to Mike Turner. Turner singled and knocked in a run in the first, reached on an error and scored in the second. Slide out to win the third. Turnersville, New Jersey. Mike told us yesterday that's about 10 minutes from Camden. On the outside corner, so Alabama gets a call on the outside part of the plate, which seems to be rapidly expanding. Runner third is Brandon Larson. And at first, Eddie Furness. Fifth inning. Taking ball, swung on and missed. For strike three. So a big strikeout for Henderson for the second out of the inning. Well, both relievers from uh, each prospective squad here have come in and really turned on the gas as far as the mound is concerned. This is a great curveball. Gets Kerner to chase. First base is occupied, no place to go. On the top of the inning, Doug Thompson came out of the bullpen to get LSU out of a big jam as Alabama had loaded the bases. Now Henderson would like to come to the aid of Tingree here in the bottom of the inning. Trey McClure, 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored in the second. Struck out in his last at bat. And he's hit by that pitch. Raised him. And he takes first base. That's the 24th batter hit at this College World Series, adding to the record. And now... Alabama will try to get out of a bases loaded situation. There's another guy taking one for the team. You can see him watching him. He's watching the ball as it hits his leg. Watch this. Boop. I know it's a curveball. It's not going to hurt very long. Yeah, I think I'll take it. Good job. Sean, you have to, that, you know, the reason they, they're hitting so many guys, you have to pitch inside with these aluminum bats. You have to establish in there. So you're going to hit a guy once in a while. Can't afford to hit one now, and he almost did. He threw it over the head. Tom Bernhardt, who ducked out of the way. Now, this is asking a little bit too much to take one in for the team if you're going to take it in the dome, so you, you got to get it out of the way. The problem here is a lot of times it can hit your bat. When you duck your head, your bat doesn't move, and the ball can be put into play. Or fouled off. Either way, it's an aggravating experience. One ball on Bernhardt. Perfect day at the plate. Not by taking a swing like that one. Tom doubled the knock in two runs in the first, and he scored in the sixth run first inning. He walked and scored again in the second. He singled the center in the fourth. Bases full of Tigers with two out. Nine to four. LSU has the lead in the fifth inning. Top to short. Duncan to Caruso. And each team left the bases full without scoring in the fifth. After five, still a five-run lead for the Tigers. What in the world? Dad took it when you walked me to school that first day, remember? It's amazing you didn't hate me forever for making you wear those galoshes. You've always tried to protect me, Mom. That's why I bought that extra life insurance. When Dad died, I found out a funeral can cost over $6,000. I never want to leave that kind of burden on you. If you're a man or woman between the ages of 45 and 75, the Mutual of Omaha companies have a guaranteed life insurance plan that fits you perfectly. It can cost you as little as 29 cents a day, and it's guaranteed in five ways. Your payments will never increase. Your benefits will never decrease. There are no health questions. You don't even have to take a physical. You can't be turned down, and it can't be canceled, ever. Call toll-free for your free information. There's no risk or obligation. 
Call 1-800-270-5511. Operators are available. Call now, 1-800-270-5511.
started out. And now he's turned around and gone back. Kip came all the way to the edge of the dirt on the warning track in front of his dugout. Well, this is always dangerous for a catcher when he's expecting a breaking ball and gets a fastball. The other way around, he has a little bit more time to to catch the ball, but here, obviously, he's looking for a breaking ball, and that fastball just eats him up. He's lucky he didn't break his hand. Apparently, that's the concern of Bertman as he started out of the dugout. He hollered at Horton. Horton said he was all right. Now, four wild pitches and two pass ball. And the breaking ball in for a strike. Chip Bertman calls the pitches from the dugout. Battery can change the pitch. It's they don't like it. Looked like Skip wanted to change the pitch. He whistled and got Horton's attention. He turned and looked in the dugout again. Fastball missed. Three and one on Caruso, who has tied the record for hits in the College World Series with 13. He's a senior from Lock Haven, Pennsylvania.
We've got a great interest. Uh, we had some regionals this year, LSU over 40,000, Mississippi State over 59,000. We're generating revenue, and it's something that uh, I think college baseball deserves. There's also been some talk. There was talk again this year at the NCAA convention, a proposal to move the season back, to move it later in the summer. Uh, do you see that picking up more momentum? Yeah, I think there's a movement to, uh, toward that, and I think it would be good for college baseball. It might put it on a level or a playing field, particularly for the northern uh, part of the country, where they don't get to play in good weather. And, uh, I think that's in the future. It's something that we're discussing right now, and hopefully we can get done. Be warm down here in Omaha, though, in July, right? All right, back to you guys. And as Andrea chatted with Ron May Street, Wes Davis was called out on strikes. Another pitch has looked a little bit off the plate, but Al Davis has been pretty consistent in calling that pitch a strike, and generally that's all you could ask for. Unless you're the hitter, then you'd ask him not to call it a strike. Exactly. That's, that's spoken like a pitcher right there. <laughs> Conan Horton, the batter. Up for the first time since he took over for Clint Earnhardt behind the plate.
strike. Coach Bergman, when we talked to him yesterday about the 19 0 start, he said, Yeah, fans have signs up at our home game. 56 0, where Skip must go. They didn't quite accomplish that, but they are 56 and 13. They're in position for another national championship. It'll be the fourth for LSU under Skip Burton. One of the great coaches in the history of college baseball. Now 58 years old. Three and one the count. Even the fans get a little bit spoiled. You know, you win so often. Everybody expects you to have great teams, and as a coach, sometimes you say, boy, we just don't have it. And then all of a sudden, bam, I'm 19 and 0. Wow, what happened? And Skip's looking forward to a little time off. 3 1 pin. Outside, ball four. First walk surrendered by Henderson. Last year, you are all aware of the heroics of Warren Morris here at the College World Series. LSU won the national championship. Team flew home the next day. They went immediately to the basketball arena on campus for a pep rally in their honor. Skip Bertman dropped his stuff off at home, went back to the airport, flew to meet the Olympic team, which he coached last summer, spent the rest of the summer getting ready for and then participating in the Olympic Games in Atlanta. And went right back to LSU for another season. So he's looking forward to a little bit of downtime this summer. Yeah, downtime for him is three or four clinics. That's right. <laughs> His own camp. And Larson, the batter. He fouled the first one back. Brandon's one for four today. Single to right in the fifth. I mentioned during his last bat that of all the records he set this year, the home run mark was the one that jumped out at him. Skip Bertman says, when you think about a conference that over the years has had Rafael Palmero, Will Clark, Bo Jackson, Frank Thomas, Albert Bell, Dave Maggot, and one other throw in the center field. And the runners will move up. Horton to third. RBA to second. On a wild throw by Henderson behind the shortstop. Duncan covering. This is a play where you're just trying to catch the other club napping. I mean, there's no way he's going to try to steal a base here. And this large body coming in takes out the second baseman. The yep. throw is wide, you can see that. These kinds of plays really don't work that often. And uh, with a, a runner that's not expecting to, to try to steal a base, just keep that ball in your pocket. The third Alabama error, this one charged to Henderson. It was Caruso, the second baseman, covering. Now two men in scoring position for LSU's best hitter. Owen won the count. They should pitch very carefully to him now with first base open. They don't, and it's a base hit. And two runs will score. Why would you give him a pitch like that to hit with first base open? And by far, LSU's best hitter at the plate. Larson delivers a two-run single. Well, the reason he got that kind of pitch was the same reason they tried to pick the runner off the second. I mean, this is the mistake, plain and simple. With this kind of a hitter up there with 40 home runs to his credit and one of the best college players in the country, you let somebody else beat you, even though you have a right-handed hitter with a right-handed pitcher and a left-handed hitter coming up next. Ball one in the dirt to Furness. The lead is back to seven runs for LSU here in the sixth inning. Ernest has had a good day. Two singles and a walk. He has struck out. Now batting 377. Ernest chops one foul. And Sean and Henderson's defense, you know, there's just it's very difficult to pitch around a particular hitter in this lineup. I mean, there are just so many guys with so much power. There's no bargain if you do put him on first. But pitch to furnace a left-handed hitter. They certainly could have been more careful in the kind of pitch they threw to Brandon Larson. Sometimes you can't always throw it where you want to. That was the case for Heath Henderson. One pitch, foul pitch. That's really one of the major differences between college baseball and Major League Baseball is the pitchers up there, they know where they're going to throw the ball, or at least they're supposed to. 
uh, down here, they'd like to know where they're going to throw it or hope to where they want to throw it, but uh, not often do they get it there.
Patrick. One for three, an infield hit, and a run scored in the fourth. He came up in a big spot as the first batter to face Thompson when Doug came into the ball game in the fifth. The base is loaded and one out. Frick struck out as did Tucker the next batter. Alabama did not score. They had a great chance to keep the momentum on their side and head closer than nine to four. Yeah, he definitely held up there. Nice call.
Kerner runs down the first base pretty good. Nice stretch by Henderson. He can't quite get to it. Ball just goes underneath his glove as he doesn't quite get it down all the way. And like I said, even if he picks this ball, it's going to be a bang-bang play at first base. As you can see the runner coming into the picture there. Score to hit for Kerner. Now a check swing roller by McClure down to first. Tucker to the shortstop and back to first for the double play. The pitcher covering 3-6-1. Tucker, Duncan, and Henderson. And that's more like the Alabama team the Tide fans know in the field. Now this is a real nice play. You don't see this very often, the old 3-6-1 job. Pitcher gets over there in time to receive the throw from the shortstop. Nicely done by the Alabama defense. Anderson to work next to Tom Bernhardt. Two outs and the base is empty. Seventh inning. LSU leads by seven, 11 to four. Bernhardt looks at a strike. He has doubled, walked, and singled, driven in two, and scored two. Talking about Henderson coming out of high school in Trustville, Alabama. He was heading for Alabama Birmingham before the start of his freshman season in 1994. He was mugged while walking through the parking lot of his high school. He was jumped. Someone broke a beer bottle between his neck and shoulder. He said it was a matter of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. They thought he was somebody else. But as a result, two arteries and a muscle were severed during the attack. He underwent emergency surgery, left him with a huge scar. Second operation was required to repair some upper back muscles that had deteriorated. Obviously, baseball was put on hold. That ball, well hit, right center, and gone. Bernhardt continues his tremendous College World Series with a home run.
Call toll-free 1-800-252-5900 to receive free information in the mail. Dial 1-800-252-5900. The call is free. And so is this anti-guide to Social Security. Call now. 1-800-252-5900. There's no risk or obligation. That's 1-800-252-5900. Get the story on your favorite players and teams fast. Exclusive columns by top writers, detailed stats, and interviews on the net. CBS.sportsline.com. Keith Henderson knocked out of the ball game for two and a third innings of relief. to give up three runs, two earned on four hits. Walked one and struck out four. He threw 40 pitches. We mentioned the mugging that he endured and the surgery afterwards. He wound up sitting out that 94 season. Then went 9-3 and three as a freshman All-American in 1995 at Alabama-Birmingham, but he had problems in the classroom, so he transferred to Central Alabama. Did well there, got his grades up, and then transferred to Alabama. But ever since he was little, he was watched the College World Series, and he never imagined when he was at UAB or Central Alabama, he'd be pitching in it someday. He did today. And it's been a glum day for Heath and his teammates, down 12-4. And the fourth pitcher of the ball game for the Tide is right-hander Doug Hurst. He's making his third appearance of the College World Series. He's 26th overall. He's 4-1. and one. Nearly a strikeout for inning and more than a hit for inning pitch. And he worked in yesterday's ball game. The win over Miami, one inning of relief. And she gave up one run on two hits. And he struck out one. He also appeared against the Canes here at the College World Series on June 2nd. First is a junior from Pensacola, Florida, trying to prevent LSU from back-to-back -back national championships. It's happened on three occasions. Three other schools have done it. LSU trying to become the fourth. Texas back at 49 and 50. USC won five straight in the early 70s. Stand for the last to do it. Back-to-back -back titles in 87 and 88. Skip Bertman's club looking for back-to-back -back titles. And the Tigers fourth in the 90s. And they have an eight-run lead in the seventh inning. After the home run by Bernhardt, two outs and the base is empty. Wes Davis. Three turns. First throws ball, one in the dirt. Davis, a two-run double. Rather, a three-run double with the bases loaded back in the second. He emptied the bases. Made it 9-0. Walked and scored in the sixth run first. Andrea Joyce, the top of our telecast, told you about the magic bottle. For LSU, the dirt scooped up at their last year's World Series, put the bottle. And the Tigers didn't bring it to their games in the regionals and at the World Series this year. They need one more win. Among the contents of that bottle, most of it is Rosenblatt Stadium dirt, he Polozola told us, but Wes Davis has a tooth that is in that bottle. He lost a tooth earlier this season while chewing gum. A tooth came out, and the players decided that Magic Bottle would be a good place for it, so it's not just Rosenblatt Stadium dirt. Strike three. That felt like a full tooth. To West Davis. One run on the Bernhardt Homer in the seventh inning for LSU. When sports cream, when legs are sore, when backs ache, when muscles hurt, why sports cream? Rubbing it in brings fast pain relief. Really. No medicine is smell. Why sports cream? Because it works. The jobs of tomorrow are here. Thousands of them waiting to be filled. But you have to know the fields they're in, and you have to have what it takes to master those fields. Because you can't get the jobs of tomorrow until you get the skills of today. Start by calling ITT Technical Institute. We'll send you an informative brochure on tomorrow's careers and what it takes to get them. Call 1-800-ITT-TECH. Both these men have athletes for it, but only one used the soothing cure. Prescription Strength Desidex. It calms the itching and cools the burning while it heals. Got athletes for Get Desidex, the soothing cure. Bugs Bunny, he's a prince. You gotta stick him in a frame, not on some...
Dear John Letter. But he's too good for Vincenzo. I got a stamp for Vincenzo. It's a toad. Special edition stamps now at the post office. Some stamps you just can't lick. Swastikas and Ku Klux Klan robes at the Citadel? You don't believe it? Neither did we, so we started looking through their yearbooks. 60 Minutes, Sunday. Back at Rosenblatt Stadium, LSU leading Alabama 12-4. to 4. Well, we know that the folks in Omaha live for the College World Series, and no one loves it more than Ann Walters, a retired school teacher from Council Bluffs. And you had not missed a single inning of a single game in the World Series in 40 years until this season. What happened this year that caused you to miss a couple games? My daughter called me in March and said, I have bad news for you because Barry, my grandson, graduates from high school. Bad news. <laughs> bad news. And I said, will he miss me? And she came right through the phone screaming and yelling. And I said, I haven't missed a game in 40 years. But I so you went to the graduation. But what happened, though? I mean, the folks around you thought you were dead. They did. Everybody said, where have you been? And they didn't know where I was. They thought I was dead. But I'm alive and kicking. You have some very fond memories of the World Series over the years. What do you remember from the early 70s? Do you remember a strapping young man from USC named Fred Lynn? Well, I don't remember Fred Lynn, but I, he probably blends in with a lot of other neat young men. But I do remember Dave Winfield. 1973, he was playing outfield, and he came here from the University of Minnesota. They brought him in to pitch. He struck out the next nine men. He set this place on fire. He really did. They took third place that year, and he was named the outstanding player. And you're an LSU fan. Why is that? Right. Well, the first time the coach was here, second time he was here, he She was dead, and apparently she thought you were dead. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I like most of that interview. <laughs> <laughs> Little looper down the right field line. Fair ball. Maybe right off the line from here. Mark's on his way to second. And he is just in ahead of a strong throw from the new right fielder, Jeremy Witten, who has just taken over in right for Tom Bernhardt. So after Tucker was out on a fly ball to Witten, here has a double down the right field line. Well, this is a pretty uh, dangerous play by Mark here. Actually, with your eight runs down, you don't want to take any chances of getting thrown out. This ball hits right on the line, and the new right fielder gets his feet wet right away. It makes a cannon throw to second base, makes this play very close. And I guarantee you, Mark here is extremely happy to always called safe. Very embarrassing to be get thrown out with an eight-run deficit. Here's Jeremy Witten, redshirt freshman from Louisville, Kentucky, a two-sport athlete at LSU. Also reserve punter on the football team. He's in right. LSU protects an eight-run lead. Runner in scoring position in the eighth inning for Alabama with one out. Nate Duncan, the number nine hitter at the plate. He's one for three. Singled in the sixth. young man as is his partner on the left side of the infield Andy Phillips Coach Wells told us the teammates call that left side of the infield the Christian Coalition a strike thrown by Dutch Thompson who's been outstanding in relief of Patrick Coogan unscored upon is Thompson three innings of relief
their win total in his very first season, won 42 games. Breaking ball for a swing and a miss. Duncan gone on strikes. And Thompson has now fanned four, make it five, and release. Well, Thompson has just been great since he's come in in the middle of this ball game when, when Alabama looked like they were going to try to claw back into it. He's thrown strikes and quality strikes. Mixed up his fastball with his curveball, as you see right here. Been tough as nails. They said he was a bulldog, and he's definitely playing the part. Now David Tidwell, the runner at second and two outs, and he takes the strike. Tidwell's one for four, singled and scored in the third. Struck out twice. Coogan and Thompson have combined to fan 13 Alabama hitters. Most strikeouts by one team pitchers in a championship game, 16. The LSU fans are remembered by Brett Laxton of the Tigers when he shut out Wichita State 8-0 in 1993.
Had to go off his glove, but he couldn't squeeze it. Caruso, every time he hits the ball, something happens good for Alabama. He drives this ball into the right center field gap. Witten just stretches out, just quite can't close the glove on it as it hits the webbing and comes out. That's when you want your glove to be broken in so that if it does hit there, it never comes out. That has to be a hit. You can't charge the fielder with an error on that play, running in full stride and a half leap with the ball up over his head. No, that, that's going to be scored a hit. At least we're scoring it a hit. But I guarantee you, if you ask Whitney if he should have had that ball, he'll tell you yes. Mm -hmm. Now Andy Phillips, the batter. 12 to 6, and a runner in scoring position. Has been scored a hit. So 14 hits in the World Series for Caruso. And he has the record all by himself now. Terrific ending to his career, a rare senior in college baseball. He'd like to have the record more than the record he'd like to have the victory. And right now, his team's six runs down. Phillips won for four. Last time up, Rob did a hit on a nice play by McClure. That's in the hole. Backhanded on the outfield grass by Larson. What a play. That's a couple of times that Phillips has had a hit taken away by a fine play on the left side of the infield. Tied. That's to settle for two runs in the eighth. Alabama still down by six in the championship game of the College World Series. What's more amazing than the places you can go on the internet? The fact that you don't need a computer to get there. Web TV from Philips Magnavox. The internet now on your television at an affordable price.
We'll have one more crack at LSU pitching. Junior can draw on the experience of having scored 10 runs in an inning against LSU this season and that 28-2 win back on May 10th in Tuscaloosa. Hurst walks the leadoff number nine hitter. And that won't earn you many points with your coach. John, usually the team that executes the best in these type games when both teams are so equally matched, they, that's the team that wins. And the left side of the LSU defense has been superlative this afternoon. Another one, nice play by McClure and Larson of take hits away from Andy Phillips. Ball outside to Higgins. He got the Tigers off and running with his leadoff homer in the first. Single later in the inning to knock in the last two runs of the six run first. Walked in the third, lined out in the fourth, struck out in the sixth. 2-1 misses. Three balls and a strike. What a year this has been for the Southeastern Conference. Florida, the national champion in football. Kentucky, national runner-up in basketball. No matter how this game ends, the SEC will win the baseball national championship. That's ball four, and Coach Wells is out to talk to Hurst.
Nate Duncan, nice feed over to Caruso. Doesn't step towards first, as you'll notice there. Kind of had his feet planted before he threw that ball. Didn't stride towards first, hence the high throw to first base. Pitch can't assume a double play, no error charge. And it is an RBI on a fielder's choice to Larson. He's driven in three runs in the ball game. Furness with a base hit. That's the diving third baseman, Phillips. Furness has his third hit of the ball game. the game they used the old Ted Williams shift against Furnace with the shortstop behind second base and he foiled him two innings ago with a base hit at dead short now he, he's done it again obviously he's uh, looked at the defense and said I'm going to go to left field today they're giving it to me I'm going to take it saw so the graphic 13 runs ties the record for most runs by one team in the college world series championship game the record set by Oklahoma. The Sooners won 13 to 5 over Georgia Tech in the 1994 championship game. Mike Kerner is the bat. One strike to count. Mike, one of the two returning starters among the position players, and he liked his team's chances when they arrived in Omaha. He told us yesterday on the bus ride to their first game of this College World Series. Players were Dancing in the aisles of the bus. The song Keep It Live. The song that became their rallying cry last year. They were very superstitious about that bus experience. They had the same bus driver they had last year here in Omaha. Jimmy the Duke Williams, the bus driver. Once again, he'll be the driver for the championship team of uh, Alabama. The amount of big comeback. Somewhere between dusky gray and pale green is a color called moss. One of the colors between the colors created by Canon Laser Color. Canon Laser Color. Its only competition is reality. Somewhere between silver and white is a color called chrome. One of the colors between the colors created by Canon Laser Color. Canon Laser Color. Its only competition is reality. This is my idea of a channel. So when I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice, that's what I thought I was getting into. What I got was a sure thing. High endurance deodorant. It evaporates less quickly than the leading stick. It also lasts longer and protects better. Old Spice even guarantees it. Or call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of yours. So if you're looking for a real challenge, the sky's the limit. If you're looking for the best deodorant, try high endurance from Old Spice. Because now you've got proof. And a guarantee. Hello, Pizza Hut. How much is one of your new pizzas? $8.99. I want pepperoni. With pepperoni. $8.99. Sausage. Pepperoni and sausage. $8.99. Peppers. Peppers. Pepperoni sausage. and pepper. $8.99. game is 
was uh, Skip Burtman had arrested Doug Thompson to bring in when their ball club got into trouble and Alabama was mounting an attack and he has done this consistently from the fourth inning on great curveballs and spotted fastballs and he's just been a world beater J.W. Keller is the batter one and one the count
most important things you can take on the golf course are peace of mind and confidence in your equipment. You take this driver. I've used it a lot, and it's never let me down. Oh, I've been known to miss a fairway or two along the way, but it wasn't this guy's fault. Same thing could be said for this. I've been using Pennzoil for over 50 years. I use it for the same reason I use this. Peace of mind. Pennzoil, made for the way you drive. Stop, go, Pennzoil. When uh, we decided to have a baby, we knew we had to stop smoking first. We had the motivation. We needed the help. We chose Nicorette gum because it was flexible. It gave us the choice of two strengths. One for light smokers, me. One for heavy smokers, me. And the power to decide, you know, how much to use and when to use it to fight our cravings. We've been officially smoke-free for a year now. And in gratitude, we're thinking of calling the baby Nicorette. It's a joke, honey. Nicorette gum will help you quit smoking successfully by helping you control your cravings. You can do it. Nicorette can help. Now there's an easier way to buy mutual funds, a place that offers investors funds from Fidelity and 300 other fund families, and the convenience of consolidating your funds on one statement, plus the ease of managing them with one phone call. That's why hundreds of thousands of people are consolidating their investments using Fidelity's Funds Network. To switch to Funds Network, call 1-800-FIDELITY and receive a free list of highly rated funds. Doug Thompson, the winner is LSU, wins its fourth national title, all in the 90s under Skip Bourbon. The winning coach is standing by with Andrea Joyce. All right, Sean, thanks. Coach, congratulations. You had told us yesterday that early in the season you weren't so sure that this team could get this far. How much sweeter does that make this, your fourth national championship of the 90s? This uh, is the best ever, uh, and I know I said that last year, but I'll tell you what, this team wasn't supposed to be there. But this is the grittiest, the guttiest, the best uh, competitive team I think I've ever had, and I'm so pleased for all of them. One extreme or the other. Last year, two out, bottom of the ninth, you win the game. This year, a nine-run lead after the second inning. I imagine this one was a little easier on your heart. Right, it was a little easier. Patrick Coogan did a good job, and, uh, of course, Doug Thompson was sensational. The kids came out swinging. We're excited for everybody in Louisiana. And I'll bet you believe in that magic dust now. All right, thanks, Coach. Congratulations, Sean.
Won the College World Series 13 to 6, the final over Alabama. Now for Andrea Joyce and Fred Lynch, Sean McDonough saying so long from the College World Series in Omaha.